dutiful guy. <laughs> He's very dutiful. D O O D. Greetings, Retronaut listeners. This is Shane Bettenhausen, the executive editor of Electronic Gaming Monthly. We brought Shane in today because he loves Sony. I don't love oh, Sony. You love Sony. <laughs> no, I l- I've seen your bed sheets. Oh. The Sony bed sheets. That'd be awesome if I had Sony bed sheets. I've seen yeah. under a black yeah. light. What, what were you doing seeing <laughs> oh, his bed hey, sheets? Hey, I think hey. I, I think oh. I once, actually, I think I did once have like Mario bed sheets. So that's my true, my true okay. little lie. And I'm Amy McDonough, and I work with One Up Edit Team. Uh, Scott Sharkey, staff writer. Not nearly as mathematically challenged as Jeremy seems to think. <laughs> I can count to three, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you were looking at him as you did the two systems before the oh. thing. Oh, I didn't realize that was an intimation of anything. Oh. So anyway, oh. <laughs> and I'm Jeremy Parrish, the erstwhile host of this show. Actually, I guess I'm not really erstwhile. I'm just the host. You're the real host. This is your the baby. real host. Okay, so PlayStation, Sony PlayStation. Did anybody here import a PlayStation when it came out in 1994 in Japan? No. Fuck no. 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 I thought about it, but then decided not to. But I, I, I was interested in it when, it, when it. When they first revealed, I remember reading about it you know, in EGM and Game Fan back in the day and, and thinking that the games did look pretty good. When you first saw Ridge Racer and Toshinden, Ark the Lad. I have yeah. to admit that when the PlayStation launched, it was in the midst of a whole lot of other system mm-hmm. launches. There was a 3DO, there was the Jaguar, there was the CDI, there was the Saturn, there was the PlayStation, the N64 was coming up. And Sega su- had like five different versions of the Genesis. Right. And, 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 and the there Super was Nintendo nothing. was just reaching like its Xenoblade. Right, right, yes. right. Yeah, you had Chrono Trigger and Mario RPG and... And Yoshi's Donkey Kong Island. Country had just re- revitalized. Yeah, even, even though it, Donkey Kong Country isn't actually good, it did revitalize. <laughs> it was a renaissance of sorts. Right. Well, and it seems like a time when there's just so much going on... Uh, in gaming and there's not the big contenders there's not the money the huge investments that you have now well i think now like as big as launch again is going to be like you know there's three viable next gen systems plus two viable handhelds it's still pretty modest consider uh, compared to the the decisions people had to make back then and those are pricey decisions if you if you invested in a 3do that was 700 bucks right away unless you waited six months and it was actually 800 wild. when it first came out 800 that's yeah. that's way too much to spend on it's these way too much i don't think anybody actually did that a few people did yeah, I, I worked at EB, eb at the time and there were some fools wow <laughs> but you know actually recently i was cleaning out my closet and i found my original PlayStation from 1995, mm. which I had to replace the uh, the entire lens drive in it because that broke, as everyone no else doubt. did. No, of course. But looking at that actual system, it, it looks really nice. And I remember when it first came out, it was the first console that kind of changed the perception had, of video games. It had games. a certain sophistication about it. Yeah. I was used to Nintendo systems, Sega systems, and they looked like toys. I mean, they were very deliberately designed. The Super NES in America especially was deliberately 